Hello. Hello. Going to give it a couple minutes for folks to join. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks have uh, con fatigue. Just going to give a couple minutes here for, I believe, um, Pop said he was going to uh, lead the meeting. Oh, yeah, he said he'll be two minutes late, so we'll just give it a couple of minutes here. Actually, I guess we can probably get started. I am pr probably going to butcher this, but um, yeah, so just uh, remember that, you know, your participation uh, in this meeting, um, you know, it, it, you need to abide by the CNCF's uh, code of conduct. And uh, also that this meeting is uh, recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube um, a little bit after uh, we close out the meeting. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, first things first, um, a couple of quick updates based on uh, the KubeCon stuff and whatnot. Uh, I know probably a lot of us have a con fatigue, so I, I'm going to try and keep this meeting relatively uh, short. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we get, you know, uh, at Supply Chain Security Con, there was some discussion about. Uh, about the paper um, at Cloud Native Security Con, um, Alex and Priya had given a uh, sort of an introductory sort of lightning talk about the the draft here, um, and uh, yeah, that that was um, you know a lot of talk about the salsa stuff, a lot of talk about a lot of different other things uh, related to what we're kind of talking about in the paper. Um, cool. So uh, I know that. Um, we sort of officially announced that this is a draft. We're looking for additional feedback. We're looking to kind of um, clean up a few uh, a few uh, final topics. So I'm gonna just uh, we should probably go around with with updates on stuff that uh, we're working on. Um, I can go quickly first. So the stuff I'm still working on is down in the reference implementation side of. Uh, the, the paper. Um, so based on the stuff that I, uh, you know, Tim and I had demoed at uh, at Cloud Native Security Con, you know, once again, trying to keep it relatively open ended and generic, not specific to what exactly what we showed off, but just sort of showing, hey, this is uh, what is available. Anybody, once again, is more than welcome to sort of put in their feedback if they think that something's missing, if they think that a certain tool maybe isn't a good fit. Feel free to sort of, you know, um, change it, put in your own feedback, whatever. Um, but they just want to kind of get the the, the stuff there um, so that we at least have something that we can then kind of modify and, and um, work off of. Uh, and so, yeah, that's the, oh, right. Uh, let me go and share. Well, so let me share. Here are the notes for the meeting. Um, one second. Here's the notes for the meeting, and then I'll uh, link the doc in a second. Here is, whoops. Is that the right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I, I linked both of those. Um, cool. So do we want to go around and just uh, uh, any updates regarding the um, the, the paper? Uh, I know Shripad, uh, you had uh, done a little bit of, you added a couple updates on the emission controller stuff. Do you want to talk through yeah. that? Yeah, so uh, I think yesterday I said, let me see if I can open it.
Yeah, so uh, this is basically based on the discussion that Michael you and me we had I think, a couple of weeks back before KubeCon that uh, for a machine controller, we can talk about basically at multiple levels. One is uh, our constituent element of the software, SSF, the factory itself, they are signed, they are secure. So we can trust our, our secure factory and uh, whatever artifacts that are built and processed through our factory. And then the second one is there are admission checks inside our pipelines, our secure software factory that will check for whenever a user instantiate this factory, it will check for like whether your base images are signed, they are coming from the trusted sources, the packages or the dependencies that you are using, whether they are coming from trusted sources, they are signed. So we can uh, think of basically the admission checks at these two levels. So I'll try to capture that in the document. So feel free to see and uh, comment if you have any feedback uh, on that. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think to your point, the main thing is, is just, uh, I think as we said before, you know, outside of maybe a couple of hints of like, hey, you should have an admission controller that's validating the attestations and signatures outside of the secure software factory for whatever comes out of the secure fa soft software factory. But we still need to make sure that um, whatever running in the secure software factory is, uh, you know, um, signed, has valid attestations or whatever, right? Um, cool. Thanks. Uh, so I'm just going down the list here on uh, in the order that it shows up on my Zoom. Uh, Priya? Yeah, sorry, I was a little bit late. Um, are we just talking about KubeCon? Uh, yeah, so we were talking about uh, any updates. Um, once again, great. Uh, uh, you had a couple of demos there, but but also you you and Alex had given a talk about um, sort of officially announcing, I guess, this draft of the uh, reference architecture. But yeah, feel free to anything regarding any updates regarding uh, anything interesting at KubeCon or uh, regarding the white paper. Uh, sorry, not the white paper, but the reference architecture. Oh, right. Um, nothing, nothing like particular. It was really nice to meet everyone in person. Um, I think people are excited to see the reference architecture. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. We got good feedback overall. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, continuing down the list here, uh, Steve uh, Lasker. Hey, folks. Um, I just, you know, trying to catch up with a lot of the stuff. I was looking at the, the doc and I see that you guys got the references to registries in there. So just trying to see how we could help with some of that. Um, we did ship uh, an alpha of the notation libraries yesterday. Um, so we're starting to get that stuff kind of really rolling. And um, hopefully we'll have a production environment for uh, even the um, uh, reference types uh, pretty soon. So just trying to get a sense of how we can help with you know, storing that graph of content uh, in servers and services that customers already have. And for people that aren't familiar, notation is the implementation of Notary V2. Awesome. Okay, uh, Aditya. Oh, sure. Uh, I actually just started to take a look at the uh, prototype stuff you added to the bottom of the document. So I don't really have a lot to add right now, but uh, yeah, this, this is what I'm gonna be looking at now. Awesome. Okay, uh, <laughs> David Wheeler. <clears throat> hey there. Um... I've been busy on lots of other things, so I haven't had much chance to work on this stuff this week, this this, this period. Yep, uh, no no problem. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, uh, there's a a million uh, things going on. You uh, had a crazy I, I, crazy guy telling you to do stuff at a co-located event last week, David. That's probably why, right? So I mean, anyway, no, no, I'm sorry, it was at the summit, so I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> all well. yeah. uh, although this isn't uh, CNCF specific. Um, you know, the uh, OpenSSF raised uh, $10 million, uh, which is a big change from zero, so or near zero. So uh, we're hoping to see some interesting things and hopefully more collaboration between uh, for everybody. Cool. We can finally afford Michael Lieberman. Awesome. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Cool. Uh, okay. Still going down the list here. Uh, Dan Lorenz. Hey, uh, just like David, I was pretty busy last week. Uh, no huge updates. <laughs> did, did everybody get their uh, chain guard uh, shirts? <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. Um, Marina? Pretty much the same as a lot of folks. I um, was at KubeCon last week, chatting with people about this, but I haven't had a chance to kind of turn that into action on the doc. So. All right, cool. Uh, Prague? Jellic? Hey, I just... Uh found this meeting on the CNCF calendar and just joining to learn and listen. Cool, do you, uh, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, um, I'm with uh, Sousa. Uh, came over when Sousa acquired Rancher Labs. I've worked on Rancher for quite a time, uh, one of the maintainers of K3S. Um, and this whole area is something we're very interested in. So just kind of starting to learn. Cool, cool. Uh, if there's anything that uh, you're interested in, um, can definitely also forward you some old uh, meetings where we might have given some more interesting uh, demos or, you know, once uh, uh, I guess the links are all up on YouTube. Um, I know a lot of folks on, on this call have given some pretty interesting demos at uh, Supply Chain Security Con or Software Supply Chain Security Con, uh, as well as KubeCon, Native Security Con and so on. Uh, and so if, if there's anything that you're interested in, we can definitely kind of forward some of that along to you as well. Craig, good to see you in the flesh as well. It'd be cool to see how like Cube Warden or some of the other stuff that y'all are working on would kind of fit into this. You know, again, yeah. we have like a V1 of this reference architecture we're building out, but always good to have, you know, additional function, functions and things that the, the community wants to see or has already a solution for. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the warm welcome. All right, uh, continuing to go through the, well, I guess actually the next person, uh, Pop, do you want to, you want to go? I really like chips and salsa. Next person. Thanks. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, uh, Trishank. Hey, I'm just, I'm um, trying to regularly join these meetings. My bad. I've been trying, but conflicting meetings would work. I'll try to do better. That's it for me. Oh, no, no, no problem. <laughs> any, uh, any, you know, obviously, yeah, with, with, there's a million meetings, but uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, okay, cool. Uh, uh, Brendan. Yeah, so other than trying to get Pop to get more into the salsa scene and uh, submitting PRs on a couple of the signed things, nothing update on the white paper this week, but uh, if anybody sees gaps they need to have looked at or something like that, feel free to send them my way. Brandon, you had me at Ola. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let me just see here. Okay, uh, Tim. Hey, um, so I've been working on something um, slightly, uh, slightly related to working on a demo that's more consumable for non-supply chain security engineers. Um, we're finding a lot of need to do, to to show to show this to other folks who, who will get it. So I've been trying to make a, a similar demo that we've been showing off, but more um, easily digestible form of like a web page kind of a thing that folks can understand. Um, and then if there's anything that that uh, now that my internal uh, work has fallen down a little bit or lightening up, I have more, much more time to commit to this. If there's any sections I can take, feel free to throw them at me. Awesome. Oh. Uh... So uh, yeah, uh, Jason just uh, joined. Uh, Jason, do you, <laughs> you want to give your? Uh, do you want to give any update either on uh, anything regarding the paper or regarding um, KubeCon, any of the other related stuff that's going on with supply chain uh, these days? Uh, I don't have any updates on the on the paper. I haven't, I haven't honestly looked at it since before KubeCon, but KubeCon was very fun. And also, uh, aside from that, very useful to talk to people, uh, yourself included, and many of the other people here about what they're what they're doing and what they're excited about. Um, I don't know what you were talking about before, so I don't know if this is off topic. But yeah, it was it was, it was really nice to sort of actually talk to people uh, about what they're doing 
uh, with Tekton and with chains and with you know all of all of this stuff, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. No, no, definitely not off topic. I know um, a lot of the folks on this call were uh, at KubeCon in person, and if not in KubeCon in person, definitely saw a few folks on the Slack kind of chatting about different uh, interesting talks. So yeah, um, cool. So um, now that we've gone around, I think um, actually, so there's, there's two things, but I want to kind of um, defer first uh, to anybody else who has any other sort of specific topics they might want to bring up or anything that they want to, you know, uh, show off any questions, concerns, any big sort of topics that from their perspective, they wanted to talk about with regards to the work that we're doing reference architecture or just sort of related. Otherwise there's, um, two specific sort of topics I wanted to get into. Um, Okay, uh, so I guess, yeah. So um, the the main one, which is something that uh, came out of Cloud Native um, Security Con, the, the big one before getting into some of the stuff with the paper, uh, is multiple people in the Slack during the uh, software supply chain secu <laughs> security con. <laughs> it's a uh, tongue twister there, say that uh, five times fast. Um, the... Uh, one of the things that was brought up multiple times in the Slack uh, as something that we should probably discuss um, is how do we uh, make this more, how do we, how do we start to bring people along, make it easier for them to consume? Because a big thing that was brought up multiple times was, hey, this all seems very complicated. And um, if I need to, you know, uh, have done all of these millions of things uh, beforehand, how do I sort of include this? A lot of folks were sort of asking to some extent, how do I include this as just a next step in my Jenkins sort of workflow, right? Those sorts of things. And I think we need to be very clear about, hey, either perhaps this is the sort of route to there, or, you know, we don't really need to go into hyper specifics, but we need to kind of be clear about, you know, some general things, or we need to say, Hey, look, sorry, you know, the, the, the old school way of doing it is just fundamentally incompatible with supply chain security. And we're not even going to kind of try and address that. And we're going to say, yes, this is, you know, you work at an enterprise, this is going to cost you some money to kind of move over to doing these new sorts of practices. I just think we need to kind of be clear about that right you know, very quickly about um, how we want to sort of address that. Because once again, we don't want to broaden the scope of the paper too much, but if somebody thinks like, yeah, we can provide some highlights, then yeah. Um, Trishak? Yeah, I, 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 out of the first two, I don't like the second option too much, which I think is, you know, not great either. But having said that, we don't want features it's just my two cents. I just started joining these meetings. I think there's a third way, which is we can say, hey, look, um, sorry you have this setup. We don't officially support it. We're cloud, we're, we're CNCF, right? We're focused on cloud native technologies only. I think that's fair to say and let someone else figure out the problem of making it work with, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and to be clear, that actually is something that we had already sort of more or less agreed to, but just wanted to kind of validate just because if enough people all go and say, Hey, this is not going to be valuable unless um, then we want to make sure we, we can address it. Cool. Uh, Brendan? Yeah, the phrasing I've been going with is that to me, it seems like this is actually a pretty complicated thing for people to implement. It's not uh, super straightforward, but that's what we're looking for the help from the community on is to try to turn this into something that people can take and use. And so that's where, we're, that's where we need the input. That's where we need the extra hands to help out. Uh, Jason? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that it should uh, go into the doc because I think to Trishank's point, like, to, it, it uh, has the risk of taking it wildly off off topic and off course, but and expanding the scope and everything. But I think it would be immensely useful to have 
at least some notes and at most some some blog post or walkthrough or or you know it doesn't even have to be official guidance it could be one of the people hearing my voice writing it like looking into it and writing it down but like and also not to call out Jenkins specifically but like these are the salsa levels you could theoretically hit with Jenkins this is the this is where it tops out this is where you know if you did everything right and everything right is described as a b c d e you top out at 1.5 and if you use github actions you can do these five things and you can get to 2.1 you know something like that i think that would be immensely useful for giving people uh well immensely useful for a lot of things if they are tied to github actions if they are tied to a specific thing they could say okay here's a roadmap for here's the best we can do and i can take that you know up the chain and say CNCF says this is the best you can do, or or Michael Lieberman says that this is the best you can do. Um, we should do those, or we can only get to with all this effort. We can only get to two point one on this. We need four for whatever other executive mandate. Uh, so we need to switch, and so those are two things. And the third is this would also give some guidance to Jenkins and GitHub Actions and Circle CI, and you know, name thirty other things to say like, oh, we, we top out at this because we don't have ephemeral build environments because we don't have the ability to do all this other stuff. So I think it would be useful immensely for somebody to write that. I assume everyone has plenty of free time to, to go, go ahead and do this. So I look forward to reading it whenever somebody writes it. Cool, uh, before I get into what I was gonna talk about, uh, Steve. Yeah, I was just gonna, I mean, there's a lot of patterns for this. It's just like, what is the incremental improvements that I can have by using something, right? It's a, it's a, I like to call it the, the Docker APIs or progressive disclosure. I say Docker run and I just, I get some experience. I don't know all the details, right? And it's not a great analogy in this case, but what are the components that somebody can use to get the most basic thing started? And maybe you can map back to the salsa levels, right? Like if you do just this without running all these services, you, this is the benefit you get. And then as you like more, you do the next step, right? So it's they start to chew off pieces that they like the taste of and they keep on eating more of the whole thing. Um, so based on what I'm about to actually bring up here, uh, so this is sort of related to, I think, um, I think that would be useful is to, um, and I don't wanna go too deep into uh, a million different things here. Um, uh, but um, the the thing here is, so there's a Cartographos um, working group. And one of the things that they're responsible for is they're, they are responsible for um, sort of building out a journey map of uh, cloud native uh, maturity. You know, so it's not exactly a maturity model. It's more of sort of a journey into... Um, some of these things. And one of the things that they sort of brought up is almost like, hey, here's the different levels of your, um, and and the proper, you know, like if you're a level five, that means you have multiple distributed Kubernetes clusters and you're able to do all these things and you have essentially enterprise level support of your, um, whether you run it yourself or you, you're you using, um, you know, a cloud offering or whatever, uh, you know, some of those things, right? And so one of the things that we ha I discussed with the Cartographos working group is it would be really good. Um, and uh, the, the book that I sort of posted there, the last couple of pages do go into some supply chain security stuff, uh, which is, uh, and um, Simon who wrote it, uh, you know, I, I gave him a couple of hints on, on how to sort of uh, <laughs> do that. But the basic idea is we would love to kind of talk through what is the, like, what are the things that we should be talking about when saying what is the bare minimum you need to start adopting this reference architecture? Because yes, there's going to be certain things you could start today as long as you are doing certain things, right? Like we, we're going to say, hey, look, we're talking purely about cloud native tools. We're talking purely about the cloud native space. If you want to kind of, you know, get some general ideas, here's our white paper. Here's a couple other things you might want to look at, but we're kind of just putting that out there. And then we might say, okay, cool. Now you want to do the cloud native supply chain security thing. Here are things that you might need to start. Look, you know, here's where you might need to be in your Cartographos journey in order to start doing some of these. And the reason why I, I bring that up is like, I think people are going to start asking, 
okay, uh, you know, I spun up my first Kubernetes cluster. How do I fix my supply chain? And you're like, well, hold on. <laughs> um, you might need to be a little bit more mature before doing some of that. Uh, you know, you, and so just wanted to kind of throw, throw some of that out there. Um, want to get folks thoughts, uh, about starting to think about, um, looking through the reference architecture, how mature do people think that this thing, you know, even components of that thing might have to, uh, how mature the person who is deploying this might have to be in their sort of journey, right? This is probably not, you know, your first Kubernetes uh, adventure, right, is going to be setting up a completely secure supply chain because of all the things that it, it involves admission controllers, it involves, you know, minimum privilege and so on and so forth. Uh, Trishank? Yeah, so uh, it's something just occurred to me, I guess, I guess what's the vision for this working group? Should it be that, you know, right now you still have to do a few things manually, but if we do this right, if we play our cards right in the future, you'll just plug in CNCF technologies like, I don't know, Tekton and just get stuff out of the box for free, you know? I think originally it was just to put a line in the sand as of right now on a V1 of a reference architecture. So I'm sorry, Michael, if I can just in, in, jump in here. So you know again it's like to build this basis for it but it's iterative right so like you said we can plug things in it but right now we literally don't have a line in the sand for somebody new in software supply chain to say oh, okay this is a basis we can start from right so that's i so uh, you know i agree with that um just how we're going to execute that at that at this point i think we've we have like this basis document i think we just have to agree okay this is our v1 get this out there and then yep. have folks iterate like you Trishank, or like craig or whomever or, or lask or whomever yeah, I was talking about this reference architecture with someone and how hard it is to put together. And it's a great reference architecture because it's the state of the world today, but all the maintainers of these projects should also look at this as a friction log, right? This is this is uh, how hard it is to put something great together. And it's not something we should all be proud of yet until it's easy. So this is a, a great set of things for just to show everybody how hard it is and how we can start to make all of this easier across our projects and try again for V2. Yeah, um, and it's something just to, to, to make sure that um... It, for I know a lot of folks who are relatively new to the group or who have missed some meetings and whatever, uh, one of the things that was brought up um, was like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've even put in the reference architecture or the reference implementation, right? The, the, the prototype implementation that we're talking about. Some of those features did not exist a few weeks ago, right? Some of the features that we still need are probably coming in a few days, a few weeks, right? Um, so, so that's definitely something that, you know, we've highlighted uh, throughout the doc that, you know, hey, look, this stuff is very raw. There's a lot of things that, you know, this is, you know, to, to what you said, Dan, this is the state of the world today. Um, this is, uh, yeah, and, and so just need to make sure that that's clear. And we also make sure that it's clear to the audience, right? If this is, you know, your first foray into cloud native, this probably isn't going to work for you yet. And we do need to work both with the open, the rest of the open source community, the folks who are working on these tools long-term to make that better and make it so that at one, you know, obviously the idea in the future would be, I don't know, like a Helm chart or something like that, that can deploy all these various things. And all you need to do is, you know, you bring your keys or you have um, some sort of key signing ceremony, and then, you know, it helps manage the rest of it. That would be obviously an ideal sort of situation, but it's going to be a long road until then. And there's going to be some manual stuff you have to do. And there's going to be certain things that you have to recognize just aren't supported. And so you need to have mitigating controls. You need to have perhaps, uh, you know, runtime monitoring and those sorts of things, you know, in, in and we just need to be um, clear on that. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of highlight that as just as we're kind of finishing up this draft of where people think of like, how mature does the audience have to be? I just want to make sure that, that you know we kind of think about that. And it might be useful to kind of get the Cartographos folks involved because then we could just point at, hey, you can't even start your supply chain journey, at least right now, with the way things are until your level three maturity, right? That's what we're kind of saying. And so then that helps them say, okay, looking at the Cartographos maturity model or journey model, you know. It, it, it just helps, I think, uh, folks kind of baseline that. Yeah, that, that, that. All that makes sense, thanks. Um, do you 
Having said all that, I mean, I, I do see an argument for, hey, you really can't start this until you're like level three or whatever. I, I'm not sure whether we're talking about salsa or some other level, but um, do you think that might be relatively easy things we might be able to point uh, folks at? Quick wins, you know, salsa level one, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I think the reference architecture highlights some of those things, and I think it, it might be worthwhile to to highlight a few things of, hey, look, these. But I, I want us to be careful because um, I think as we've sort of talked about in the past, one of the problems is because supply chain is so holistic, it's very easy to give people the wrong idea that if you're not looking here, but you're looking in all these other places, that's still you know. It, there's still the potential to be, uh, you know, that's the, the your weakest link, and maybe you just need to be aware of it. I think we can kind of highlight a couple of those, but I think the thing that we're trying to really push is that end-to-end -end sort of thing, and we recognize that you we do need to draw that line in the sand, as Dan said, of hey, if you're not doing some of these things, you might not be getting as much benefit. But we we could still highlight a few things of like, if you can't do anything else, maybe here are the three things you should be focused on in the reference architecture you call it we are going to call that on the doc right we're going to say this is basically at this point please iterate as necessary this is a living breathing you know document that people can iterate to then we'll have one more 1.1 of this document but like again i think yep. every week we're having the same discussion about what is this doc and yeah. this is a little literally the line in the sand as of right now that we need to kind of get out there because people yep. do not have this rosetta stone right now and that's what we need to give them i think Yep. Um, and uh, yep. Uh, yeah, I agree. And and so with that said, I think outside of just highlighting that, um, highlighting like, hey, look, this is sort of where we expect you to be at. I think the rest is something like, yeah, maybe a one point one of that doc as we go back and say, okay, here's the things that you know, whatever. So okay, cool. Um, so now that that's uh, been been highlighted, I think the next step is I just wanted to kind of go through a couple of topics on the actual paper. Um, here, and I'll, I'll uh, just wanted to make sure that we we have some of that um, sorted out. Just wanted to make sure that with folks, uh, you know, I don't want it. Uh, I don't want folks to kind of think that you know, hey. <laughs> I didn't realize that that had gotten updated or whatever. Um, uh, so the the main things, and this is where, um, uh, so one of the big ones that Tripod is still, you know, uh, he fleshed out a little bit, could probably use some additional feedback and so on, is the um, admission controller for the secure software factory itself. So as, as a reminder, we, we stated that the um, production uh, admission controller, so that means the admission control in to like what we would consider uh, production itself. So like, hey, are we validating that whatever has gone through the secure software factory, right? That, that's sort of more or less out of scope. But um, there are some elements here for regarding the actual admission controller for the secure software factory, software factory itself. Like how do, we main, how do we make sure that the, uh, that the secure software factory is only running images that are approved to run in the secure software factory. So approved builder images, approved, like let's say for example, Tecton, right? If are the Tecton images signed by the Tecton key, are you know, whatever else signed by whoever else's keys, are they, you know, validated, you know, do they have their own attestations and so on? Um, to make sure that, you know, hey, our secure software factory is sort of useless if we're not. Um, securing the secure software factory. Uh, so that's one area wanted to make sure that we kind of get some additional feedback on. Um, and then, uh, so any thoughts on that? Right. Um, once again, feel free to, you know, put uh, thoughts in the doc and, and whatnot. And then finally, the, the other one, which I just wanted to make sure, because I know I wrote a bunch of stuff before KubeCon on this. Hey, is... Michael, can you go back up to the matrix up there? That's like, oh, and sure, this yeah. Is, yeah, so Shank, remember you were saying earlier about like, hey, we should plug in different technologies. This is why I put this matrix in here, because any reference architecture, right, has the, the time and 
you know, the, the point in time aspect of it, right? Just for people to get enacted here. But like, there's sources here that we can plug in different things, right? So in the future, right, we can just add different, you know, things and maybe make this matrix something that could be like a standalone, like info, info guide, you know what I mean? There's definitely logic behind that piece of it. But like, as Michael said, then you get into the actual guts of the operation, right? So like folks are going to look at this and say, okay, like, how do I do that? Like, what, it, what, it, what do I need to do? And then the, how do I need to do it? Right. So that's kind of why we, we did this. So if artifact signing is going to be, you know, an v 2 or cosign or whatever, like you have that here. And then let's say some other technology comes into play, right. Then you can plug it in there as well. Does that make sense, Trish Hank? Yep. Totally. Thanks. muted. Uh, uh, sorry about that. I clicked something and lost my spot there, but yeah. Yeah. So, and then on that same sort of note, so started writing up a prototype reference implementation. Now to be clear, uh, anything that is left out of here is not on purpose, right? It, this is purely, um, just, so I know most of you have seen, uh, the demo that, uh, Tim and I had given, or just, I had given at some of the various supply chain meetings over the past few months. Um, it's more or less based on that. And so just, uh, and the code is right now all open source and whatever. I, I think that this should obviously be at some point an actual CNCF um, thing. So once again, uh, just want to be clear, the, anything, any decision was made here is just because uh, myself and my team are familiar with the tool or, or it was just what we could get working or it was just based on the time we had. So don't think that anything in here is a specific decision that is set in stone and like, hey, why did you use this tool and not that tool? Um, you know, Michael, I don't think we have to reiterate. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I yeah. don't think we have to reiterate time after time. Everybody right in here is watching. This is literally what we have as of right now to folks that are practitioners, practitioners <laughs> and end users, period. If anybody has an I, issue, I, anybody here has an issue, please. That's it. We're done talking. Okay. About it. Okay. It just right. we've gotten a lot of uh, feedback recently that some folks had felt like certain technologies were specifically Let's left out. Let's move on from that discussion. Let's okay. get this out there. Okay. Cool. So um, here's the components as they are. It's more or less based off of the thing. You know, it's all sort of open source. Once again, this code here. At some point, uh, I don't know why. Is GitHub down? <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Too, many, too many commits today, buddy. Uh, yeah. I uh, did well, see so a couple errors did earlier, but it's Yeah, I just started getting 500s. Um, anyway, <laughs> so this is just some examples here. Most of the stuff is under... Eh, okay, hopefully. Uh, well, worst comes to worst, the code is, is under here. Feel free to use it as you see fit. Feel free to poke around with it. Um, uh, you know, uh, I based this piece of that based on that. Um, feel free to kind of go through, uh, you know, add your own sort of input here. Um, at some point, I know this is something that uh, want to talk with some of the other uh, CNCF folks on, hey, could we just either, either take the code that we have already, you know, that is external from the CNCF and sort of donate it, bring it in, or should we just sort of rewrite it based on what we're, it doesn't matter, but this is something that we should kind of look through. But I, I am very much looking for feedback on this section because this is the sort of, you know, prototyping um, section of the paper. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's also a lot of stuff that, to be clear, that is already made um, probably obsolete based on features that were released in the middle of KubeCon. So, uh, you know, there's certain things in here that are already need to be potentially um, uh, change before like an official release, but generally this is just, this is just what I threw out there. Want to get feedback on it. And uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll take a look at this today. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Let me stop sharing. Um, well, that's all I had um, as far as topics.
Oh. Okay. Well, that's weird. Um. Anyway, it looks like some folks uh, thought the meeting was pushed back an hour. Um. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, anybody have any uh, additional sort of thoughts, topics, um, anything that they wanted to make sure sort of gets discussed? Uh, I believe based on um, what Andres was saying is we do want to get like a full-fledged draft finalized in the next like two weeks. So um, if there's any big things the idea is before the holidays so then we don't just come back to oh shit we have to start this over again right i mean let, let's let's all be honest with each other right so um yeah so i think that's probably why we want to and i think we're like what 90 percent there right pretty much have to just dot the i's cross the, the early or lowercase j's i guess Yeah, yeah, and I think you know there's certain sections that probably just need to be slightly reorganized, and I think it's it's I think we're reaching the point where it's almost more of just a formatting thing. I think there's like two or three final little topics that we want to just make sure get clarified, and that that's why I really want to to start uh, looking through it because I'm sure there's probably going to be a, a handful of things that we might be missing. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering. <clears throat> I I work a lot with the uh, open SSF folks. Um, I'm wondering if I uh, should point this this draft uh, on the Google Docs over to the open SSF best practices working group, see if they've got any thoughts, comments. With the disclaimer, David, that like we have two weeks, you meaning like we, you know what I mean? Like we have a two, two week kind of review period. We're not going longer than that. Uh, Andres, welcome. Uh, just kind of talking about that in the eyes and, and I'm not trying to be a dick there, David, and just kind of like, just, you know, wanting to make sure that we don't have way too many chefs in the kitchen to be able to say, like, we get this document out, unless there's something that some on the open FSSF side says is absolutely necessary for us to redo. But at this point, we've been working on this for two months with all of the folks that have been, or three or four months at this point with all the folks here that have kind of commented. So yeah. Welcome Andres. You might have to hold off till another 50 minutes to say that the second group of folks coming in yeah you, you, you could get the second shift <laughs> <laughs> oops uh forgot that yeah that but that was posted <laughs> my dad it's all right the lock is, the doc is looking really good yeah um So, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, I guess to give, um, does anybody have anything else? Otherwise I can catch Andres and, and on up on, on, uh, some of the stuff. All right, cool. Um, we, we haven't had this segment be recorded, right? Cause Amy moved the recording to kick off it. Nine. Oh, it is being recorded. Yeah, yeah, yep, uh, yep, it is being recorded. Yeah, 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 I double checked. Yeah, I double checked. Good, good. Yeah, yep. Um, and I went through the whole uh, <laughs> a spiel that 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 this you know abide by the uh, CNCF code of conduct and that the meeting is is, is recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Cool. Um, so uh, yeah, so the main things you know just wanted to make sure was hey. Anything cool from KubeCon that folks wanted to talk about uh, or any of the related co-located uh, events that folks wanted to kind of chat through, especially specifically regarding um, supply chain security. Uh, definitely enjoyed getting to meet a lot of you in person, uh, which, you know, especially after two years, mostly indoors, uh, was, was, was nice. Um, and then uh, we went over um, a couple of... Uh, topics regarding um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, just regarding some some open stuff regarding like, for example, hey, can we get some additional clarification on the emission controller piece? Can we get a few other things here and there? Can we also get some eyes on the prototype implementation stuff that I wrote? Um, and then just wanted to see if uh, one of the things that we can start to do is once we start to sort out, like, you know, we say, hey, you know, we've already sort of said, here's the um, 
here's the uh the whatchamacallit. Uh here here's what we have. And then looking at this document, what what sort of audience should we be saying, hey, look, for now we recognize that the supply chain security space is hard. It's not going to be trivial. This is not going to be something that everybody's going to be able to just pick up day one. Maybe something like the Cartographos working group, like, hey, can we say we, you know, generally we think that you should be at this level of your Cartographos journey, right? So for those who don't know, there's just like, I think it's like level one to level five on the Cartograph Cartographos journey. Maybe just saying like, we, we, we're, you know, we're making a call and saying, most likely the intended audience is for those who are at level two or level three before you start looking at this sort of reference architecture. If it's before that, we just don't think, you know, you might be able to sort of implement this yet because of, you know, the, the things you might have already had to consider. So just want to kind of to get, uh, so those are the, 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 the pretty, the big topics. Um, anything else I missed from anybody? I just want to jump right in into the prototype section looks awesome. We currently have that as an appendix. We probably want to move that further up in the doc because that that is the meat of the doc. 100%, 100% agree. Yeah, and it it's right now, right after all those tables that open up the prototyping section, but what you wrote has a whole lot more narrative. It's more approachable. So slotting it further up, shuffling things around. It's awesome. Cool, yeah. What kind of feedback are you looking for there? Um, I think the main feedback is, is there anything folks think I'm missing? Is there anything folks think that is, hey, here's a specific gap, uh, anything that um, <laughs> uh, folks think that like, you know, oh, actually, I really am like opposed to doing it that way because I think here's the problems. I think we should do it this way. Because um, I, you know, to be clear here, I, I recognize that a lot of this is still very POC, as I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, a lot of the features and functionality, right, that are in that prototype implementation are things that didn't exist before, you know, like less than a month ago. And so, and then in fact, some of the things I even put in there, uh, like Kyverno, Ky both Kyverno and Gatekeeper both released features in the middle of KubeCon that change how I would probably have done some of the stuff in there. So just, I think it, it is one of those things where I, I, we just need to be clear of like, hey, look, uh, recognize that that some of the stuff in here might is very much like fluid because of how quickly the space is moving. Yeah. Now, if you look at the delta between what uh, Priya did, all, all the initial groundwork done by the TechCon team to like when we started this group to where we're at now, like it's a huge progress. That, that's been made like there's there's a lot of pieces here that didn't exist this might be a huge ask but if if you're able to if you're able to scrub your demo a little bit and share it with others and have people run it uh and we could check in that code as part of this uh, yep. yeah. yeah we're 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 definitely um you know down to kind of uh yeah CNCF, you know, take the code and, and kind of move along with it. And in fact, actually, you know, after some of the demos we had given at KubeCon, uh, some folks have been uh, reaching out to me about, hey, uh, you know, can you walk me through how this demo works and, and yada yada. And, and I think, um, you know, there, there's a lot of good uh, stuff on that front that, you know, folks are, folks are now seeing that this is a real, actually a real thing as opposed to it just being purely like, there's a lot of good work in different spaces, but one of the things that I know we from um, the Cloud Native Security Con, um, you know, in the Slack that was cons consistently brought up was, wow, this seems hard. Um, this seems like, how do we get this running? You know, how how can folks get this running? And I think the doc is going to say, hey, look, this is the maturity model. You this is the maturity you should have. But then in addition to that, we can also show off, and here is a general end-to-end -end demo that you will still need to know like, a lot about how these pieces work to get the most out of it. But, you know, as long as you're at a certain level of maturity, you should be able to follow this, no problem. Yeah. The, the demo is really the culmination of 
with the worker, right? I I wonder if, if yeah. we invert the the ordering of the doc entirely altogether, and like we open up with the payoff and say, hit here's the end to end reference architecture, and then all the text goes around to support that. I think there should be a diagram. Right? The diagram should kind of illustrate. There should be an illustration first, right? Because people like pictures, right? And so I I agree that should be the case. But like again, so something that's we should. Uh, did we ever talk to? Uh, by the way, did we ever talk to the the CNCF folks to, to kind of take the reference architecture and pretty it up a little bit? Did we ever go that route? I forgot where we There's were. There's a ticket open. Okay. There's a service that's to ticket open. I'm waiting to be picked up. Because I, I can barely read, so if I have something I can put crayons to, it's it'd be ideal. John laughed at that. That's good. <laughs> we we want to start closing this up, right? So, like oh. David, John, Jason, I'm sure you have a ton of perspective. And like, well, is there more work here to be done? Is there is and can this guys like tighten this up and like publish it and include those pictures in the demo and should be good to go. Yeah. Um, actually related to the Cartographos uh, um, uh, children's book, the Admiral Bash's Island Adventure book. Uh, I can't remember who it was. I'll, I'll have to kind of go back, but re they reached out um, to say, hey, does somebody want to have a CNCF supply chain? And I said, let's wait till after the reference architecture, but they're like, do you want to, um, you know, do some of you us want to write a children's book on walking people through supply chain security? <laughs> Could we base it in Dan Lawrence's hair? Can we start from there? That'd be ideal. <laughs> Untangling the matted nest of supply chain dependencies. You wouldn't be the first. Uh, there's a coloring book for SE Linux. I have that. Oh, was, it, was it by the oh, NSA? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't, although. <laughs> okay. Although oh, I well, well, just decide. Let's stay focused. How yeah, much yeah. Do we, like, we want to do more? Sure, there's there's a bunch of aspirational byproducts, but. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, I. I I was just throwing that out there. Yeah, no, no. To be clear, I'm saying, let's once we're finished with this, I, I pretty much told everybody who was asking about like what are the next steps with this thing. I, well, why don't we finish the draft first, and then we'll talk about any potential next steps. Yeah, Andres, I think I think like the, we, it will never be done. It's moving so fast, it will never be done. The question is not when is it done. The question is when is it done enough or worthwhile to put out now. And I think to, to Dan's point, it is worthwhile to put out now like as soon as possible uh it will obviously become out of date 30 seconds after it is released and that there no amount of updating will ever fix that so we no. should and when we yeah. promote it i think or excuse me when we kind of extend the top to our networks and say look this is our line in the sand everyone please iterate on it like that that to yeah. me is yeah. i think the the beauty of this because people will look at it and go oh well you know they didn't think about this let me you know and that's where invite them to the group and say Let's go. Let's keep on, you know, iterating on it as possible, right? So right. And this is this is our recommendation as of Thursday, October twenty first at eleven fifty five. By eleven fifty six, we might yeah. have something else. So I hear yeah. three. It's done enough. What about the yep. rest? Do you see anything that is like? Uh, you missed the first learn. part, Andres. We we have we're I think we're giving it next two weeks, right? So I think. Um, David said he was going to have the open SSF folks take a look at it. And I think it's basically like, you know, cause, cause we, we have the, you know, the break, we want to try to get this done. Like we talked about before, like the holidays. So we can, you know, come back to whatever the responses to it are. So that's a week more than Michael and I were willing to give it as of last week. Okay. Then that's fine. Then oh, I guess we have a week. Yeah. yeah th sorry. Sorry. Yeah. David, I think David, it was... we have a, you have a week with the open SSF looking at, it. is that cool? I already sent the email saying they had two weeks. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't I mean, wait. Sure you if... told me. So, told me ask. I did it. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, the only other thing I was just going to add on there, which is uh, j j just that a, a real quick um thing, because just like as a as a point of maybe in the future of of some of the stuff that we want to do. 
right? Because I, I agree with everything that Andres and Dan have said. And one thing that I, I noticed that seems to have been working really well for the salsa working groups uh, that are part of the open SSF is that sort of like they recognize how quick things are moving. So it's like they have V0.1 and then two weeks later they have V0.2 and they're just kind of saying, look, this thing is going to be very much a living thing. I don't know if we want to go that route, but it, it might be something that after we're done with the draft, we might want to start considering. Okay. So the side of diagrams and some terraforming the prototype section further off, we're calling it. Uh, more or less, I think there's just a couple of things that need to be sorted out with the emission controller piece. There might be one or two things we might want to just fix up with the, the reference implementation and then any diagrams and those sorts of things. Okay. Uh, Can we get a thumbs up from the group, I guess? Those out. Sorry, let's explicitly call this out for the folks who are going to be dialing in in two minutes. So we got some action items assigned and let's ask for a turnaround of before Monday. Like let, let's spell out what's missing on admission controllers. If that's incorporating like the latest Caverno modeling of it. And what what's the other bit? You just said I'm taking some notes. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's the emission controller piece, and then there's the um just like some additional thoughts about the reference implementation. Like, and I think at this point it should be either quick real quick, like, hey, just highlight this in the reference implementation, or it should be, there's a gap missing there and it's you know larger than a bread box. So we should call it out as we recognize that the, the prototype implementation has this gap. It was not addressed right now and just kind of call that out. Um, I think that's the, that, that's the way I would sort of highlight it, but any other? Pop, what's some what's some language to convey that? At the time of this writing, this is outside the scope of the reference architecture. Yes, yep. and then and then and again, uh, if anyone wants to suggest certain things, please join us. You know what I mean in the group. So this is also should be some type of recruitment document, as well, you know, enrollment document uh, for for tag security, right? For this working group. Okay, but Which that that wouldn't be in the body of the text, right? It would be like a header or. Yeah, yeah, we should we should definitely open that up with that. This is as of this date, as Jason said earlier. Um, you know, if there's anything you'd like to suggest here, this is a working breathing document. This is iteration 1.0. Yeah, maybe not to wordsmith too much, but maybe don't say out of scope, just say it's a gap we know about. Because out of scope makes it sound like we don't want to fix it. Like a known gap. Anyone else had any any thoughts on the word, the words there? I got to drop for calls. See you all. Yeah. We're going to talk okay. about known gaps. We should probably enumerate those in an appendix section of other known gaps. Yeah, good point. Okay. Michael, number of folks coming in again. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we can, yeah. Um, <laughs> Two hour work session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do think it's funny. Um, I was just about to say, like, almost one of the things that we want to highlight is some of these known gaps might be filled by the time that this is released. <laughs> just because of how quickly uh, some of the features and integrations and so on and so forth are being pushed out. Uh, so, actually, the one person who I see who uh, has joined who um, I haven't spoken to and we haven't gotten an update from is uh tim uh, hello. hello sorry i um turned out i was i was watching the supply chain conference last week um and heard about your working group and thought i'd come and check you out cool do you do you want to introduce yourself hi uh, sure i'm a gcp security architect i work for pa consulting in the uk um I have an interest in financial services and supply chain security. Cool. Well, glad to have you uh, on board. And, and uh, let me, um, once again, 
post the links to the uh the the meeting notes as well as our reference architecture and um as you probably heard you know we are looking to get feedback on it but uh, I'll be quick <laughs> about that feedback um and then obviously over time you know we'll continue to iterate there'll be a lot more stuff on there and you know uh, so on and so forth you know glad to have you uh have you on board all right. Um, another person joined, uh, Deepak. Do you want to um, give an update or uh, introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Deepak Ketwal. I am a chief architect at the UKG. Um, so this is my first meeting and we are doing a lot of uh, migration effort from the on-premise uh, Kubernetes to the um, GCP. So very much interested in um, understanding the CNCF open source community and what we can leverage. Um, so very excited to be part of uh, CNCF community and understanding and how we can contribute as well. Cool. Uh, glad to have you on board as well. And just as so as a reminder, yeah, this is the um, supply chain, the, the software supply chain security stuff and uh, the um, documents for it are posted in the uh, chat. Feel free to take a look and, um, you know, provide any feedback. Definitely. Sounds good. Thank you. Just to add a little bit of color, we are coming pretty close up on completion of, of the document. We're looking to tighten it up over the next week or two and make it available for public comment. Uh, we we're looking for like any 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 oversight or any glaring like mistakes, uh, omissions we, we might have made. Uh, it's the type of contribution we're, we're looking at this point for. We are also going to be shuffling some of the content around. We might open up with the conclusion, which right now is part of the appendix of the prototype ref for the reference architecture. But yeah, John, you have you have some opinions around opening up with the conclusion. What do you think? Yeah, I. I um... I like that idea. I, I, I mean, I don't have any stronger opinion than, than the tweet I, I posted a link to, which is like, this is not a TED talk. Um, we, do, we don't need to build up a big like uh, sense of like purpose. People, I think people, especially now understand supply chain security is important. Yeah. So one thing I would say, which um, um, I don't wanna, like among this group and among most engineers, I think they recognize, um, one of the things I think that kind of came out of uh, also some of the stuff in supply chain security con was just how few folks really understand the scope of the problem still, uh, both at, to some extent, at the executive level, that's sort of outside of our purview, um, but uh, also even among the engineers who are just like, what does that actually mean for me? And you're like, actually, it means, you know, today you have job tomorrow your company goes out of business because they completely got pwned and there's no way to roll you know there's no way to figure out exactly what what uh what went wrong definitely we we should try to convey that within the summary of it like the relevance of it and applicability to like, everyone's responsibility right to try to channel uh, Jason Hall, uh, I'm not sure I can paraphrase you too well, but we're doing some constraining of, of the scope, right? And the, the scope naturally is going to evolve, like state of technology is, is going to evolve. So we're, we're capturing like a snapshot in time of what we know and how to best address what we know. But there's gonna be, again, some some things that we didn't manage to get to. We're going to try to declare those up front. Uh, we don't want this to become dated, but it's going to be dated pretty quick. So we we kind of like want to leave out like, well, how to how to continue to build on it, and it might fall back on us, right? It's it's hard to expect for people to come in and do like the sequel to the paper or like second edition for it 
when they didn't have initial state. Jason, is the, does that express what you what you said from the first part of this call? Yep. 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 Makes sense. Uh, notice Axel joined. Um, do you want to? Sorry about that. Uh, there was some <laughs> mistakes were made, and so now we've had uh, two two supply chain meetings uh, today. So um, oh, did the four, yeah the other one went ahead. Oh, I, I, yeah, I yeah, just saw yeah, last that, minute that it was not going ahead. So I was like, okay, great, great. I'll wait until five o'clock. Um, yeah, okay, no problems. Well, <laughs> cool. I'll so, read so the we're, notes, we're, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. So so uh, we're, we're doing a second one. So um, feel free to give any updates uh, from your end. Not much on my end. Uh, I, I did some stuff last week for Sig Store for KubeCon, uh, like a getting started guide not really super relevant to this group, I guess. I mean, except for those, you know, I mean, it's somewhere along the line, it is a little bit, but yeah, no, nothing much otherwise on my end, nothing on our, on the group's uh, actual work. Cool. So yeah, I don't so know if everyone has had a chance uh to go over Michael's prototyping section uh, that's been added since we last met. Uh, Michael's currently looking for feedback on it. Uh, once again, we're thinking moving further, this section further up, uh, or like out of an appendix and right into the main body of, of the document. So we could give that once or, or twice over, be really beneficial. Um, you also wanted to direct people's attention to the admission controller section. Yep. Yeah, just as uh, yeah, the, the the very quick thing is just like, yep, we already said that the admission controller for production is more or less out of scope outside of saying you should have an admission controller that you know is validating that what comes out of the secure software factory has been signed and yada yada. Um, but then there's also the, you know, the, the, the other thing, which is just have, um, have admission control within the secure software factory so that whatever you're using, right, whatever your CICD is using, and I'm just going to use the example that I've done in the prototype implementation, but like, hey, validate that the SIG store images are signed by the SIG store key. Validate that the um, Tecton images are signed by the Tecton key. Validate that any builders are signed by either your key or, you know, a key that you trust and valid, you know, and if you want to, you know, validate the, you know, any sort of salsa attestations or similar that, that you would want on those, those images. Um, and then while also I think highlighting, um, there might be a gap today in stuff like admission control for Tecton tasks, because rather in the sort of broader tooling space, I know that the solar winds folks have written some stuff, but it seems like it's all custom internal code. But it might still be just sort of useful just to kind of say, hey, and you should be, you know, looking at admission control for your tasks and yada, yada, to make sure that only approved things are actually running both as the secure software factory and in the secure factor, software factory. What's out the secure software factory? I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, anything else? Anything else folks wanted to chat about or any other topics? I noticed at the beginning it says part one of five. Is, is there, what are the other four parts? I, I'm not sure. That's, that's a good question. It might just be a, like a weird formatting thing that. Okay. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> Andres deleted it already. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> um, we are going to soft with software factory, right? Tool steam ahead, carrying the yep. 1974 Microsoft definition of it <laughs> i i think the idea here is like uh 
Yeah, yeah. So many, so many of these ter terms are all overloaded by a million different folks. Because you also have the DoD definition of software factory, which is like, like literally, like, oh, these are are locations where software is written, <laughs> and and the tooling that they've used to sort of, you know, write that software. Oh, that's right. a nice one. I didn't know that one. <laughs> And a very industrial engineering view of the world, manufacturing engineering. So what you're saying is we should have, uh, we need to have an abstract secure software factor, software factory. Uh, but, th but that would produce many supply chains, right? Not many <laughs> software artifacts. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Should we, I mean, sorry, if this isn't the thing, I haven't looked at it in a bit. Um, should we maybe just address that fact, you know, that this term has been used multiple times over the past? And, you know, we are aware that you know, people have come at it with various definitions, but, but, you know, this is what we're using and this is why we're using it, maybe? Yeah, I think, I think we have some of that language on the supply chain best practices saying, hey, we borrowed this from the latest interpretation from the United States Air Force Platform One. Uh, this traces back to this paper published in 1974 from, from Microsoft. Well, I'm wondering if, if we're cargo culting stuff and like, is, is this really a factory? We're we calling it a factory because other people have. Rather than to maybe debate the the word itself, uh, just like in the first introduction section, we call out um, we're building on the supply chain best practices white paper that has a definition of a software supply chain. We should probably just reintroduce that same definition. Just like this is what we're talking about. It doesn't really matter like what the I don't care what the word is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Agreed. I mean, if if we do want like the the um. I do like secure, regardless of the other terms for secure software factory, I do like just the general term of it's a factory, which means it's a set of tools that maybe go beyond just continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, continuous, you know, uh, building and yada, yada. It's like a set of all these things that you, you know, oh, you go into the secure software factory, you do some stuff and the output of that secure software factory is secure software. Um, that's what comes to my mind, but if there is a better term for it, I am, you know, especially if that term is already overloaded in a million other places, I'm totally okay. Like I'm not one to really care much about yeah. the specifics there, as long as that the term is clear and we, you know, in the community, we're not confusing people. It's a useful concept, I think. However, like the, the understanding of people having factory is, is very much dated and the industrial revolution right it's not like modern world just in time manufacturing 3d printers like geographically dispersed to just ship things to whoever did locally rather than like oh we we have like big box on china and that's the factory and then things. but i think what's powerful in in the software factory term is is the chain of assembly i think that's what comes to mind for a lot of people and so that's what we're because a big part of what we're talking about is you know the build the build which is really the assembly line so i think that's where it works quite well um however i do have a small problem with or small i actually have a very big problem with what michael just said that we will build secure software like i I, we, no, we can't say that. You know, we will. I, I know. I can see in your face that you know exactly what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't so, say so, that in those words. If we we can yeah, say, yeah. you know, we build software that, you know, puts a strong emphasis on security and all those things. But you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I what I should say there, and I think this is where maybe the salsa stuff also comes into play, right? Um, right. It's uh, security levels for software artifacts, um, and so it's almost like there is a level of security that we are attesting to based on what we have, as long as you're following the reference architecture. Yeah. Now, that, yeah. And, and to be clear, we recognize that <laughs> calling anything secure is, is fundamentally, uh, you know, problematic. There is, 
there is a, like a, a bit of a trick out of that is instead of saying secure software supply chain, it's software supply chain security. And you just, you're talking about, you know, the property of it versus the actual state. Like you're not saying it's secure, you're just going, you're saying something about the security of it, or, you know, you're making an effort in that, in that dimension. Um, you know, it's a bit of a, I know it makes some of us feel better in, in our commitment to what we're putting on paper, I suppose. Um, but it is a bit more of a, like, just a grammatical trick, I suppose. I don't know if you're talking, Michael, you're, you were not coming out. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I just. No worries. No. Oh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go on and on about this. I think we all are well aware of, you know, the limits of what you're saying. And I think it's, it's a very good point of saying, you know, if you follow these steps and these approaches and, you know, you follow basically the requirements, you will have some level of guarantee. I and mean, that's really what we're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's exactly the sort of thing that we would love to be able to, to talk through. And then, um, you know, because I, I think, especially with, with salsa and a lot of these other things becoming, you know, uh, salsa being a real thing and, and <laughs> salsa where at KubeCon, um, folks were very, you know, I'm sure folks are uh, very interested in understanding, okay, now how do we kind of how do I baseline my understanding here, right? And it's say, hey, here there's reference architecture we think based on these properties, right? Like the output here is is salsa too, which I mean, that's just my basic, super basic um, assessment is is pretty much as long as you're following these things, it should be salsa two. It's almost salsa three, but there's a couple of things that are missing that are features and integrations that just don't aren't ready yet. Um, yeah, uh, and so. Yeah, just just um, but yeah, I agree that the the thing that I, I I'm also worried about actually that came out of this cloud native security con, but that this is just something that's out of the scope for this. But I just wanted to kind of highlight, which is just there's still a lot of folks who are just like, hey, I keep hearing uh, supply chain security as being a big problem, and I keep seeing demos and like I can't sign all my stuff, I can't do all these things, I can't blah blah blah, and it's like okay, well, we now I think have a a pretty good set of patterns of. Well, start looking at the best practices paper. And if you're mature enough, we think you could follow the architecture and. I just, I just changed the title again. Hey. I think some middle ground at, at approximate the three of the three of our points of views. It's not final though. We can keep iterating over it. Yeah, yeah. I I like the secure software factory. <laughs> like it's this one. It's puncher. Then Lawrence, what do you think? Uh, Dan, if you're saying something, we can't hear you. Yeah, you might be thinking really loud, but it's not sounding. How about the subtitle? A reference or architecture? Or the reference architecture. I mean, a because we already we're going to say later on in the document that you know this is one way of doing things. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think if we do go with the, I would say we should do the cloud native reference art because I, and I and or we might also want to say a cloud native reference architecture just to make sure that it's it is crystal clear in the thing that it's like. Oh, this is not the reference architecture. If you have uh, a bunch of you know uh, hardware with with running Jenkins, and that that hardware is not ephemeral, and yada yada, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So starting to clean up. Do we do we really need the contributing guidelines? I think this is in our other doc. 
on our notes tracker for the meeting. Um, yeah, then, yeah, that's fine. Uh, as long as it's in the, uh, in that thing. Oh, move it to the bottom for the time being. Uh, my ant shortcut's not working here. Page down is. Uh, we don't have this. this. What's the word count right now? That's a lot of words. That is a lot of words. Help needed areas. Uh, that is still true. We did split the, the content on admission controllers, but you said if you're using Tecton, check for the Tecton signatures. If you're using Cosign, check for the Cosign signatures. Michael? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I have it highlighted in the um, reference implementation piece, the pro or the prototype implementation piece, but I think we need to just call it out. Uh, so to be clear, um, uh, Shripod has done some of this. And so we just need to get, kind of get some additional feedback and, and clean up um, some of that a little bit. So it's just very, very clear on on the sorts of things that we're, we're looking for. Um, but yeah, I think you could probably just do admission controller and that should be fine. Uh, this thing's still hyperlinked, I don't know why. Clear the formatting of that. Um, and corporate or uh, I believe the uh, prototype. Inputs and outputs done. Uh, I believe so. Um, unless anybody has any specific things. This is the known gaps. That. CSA serverless. I'm not sure I know the context of that. Red model, the prototype.
Dan is not on mute now. He's away from his desk. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Brandon is out of office this week. I'll follow up with the CNCF on the status of that diagram redesign. Michael, you, you generated this one using Python, didn't you? Not this one, the other one. Oh, yeah, the other one. I uh, What was it called? Uh, Pi diagram or something like that? Yeah, it, it was one of those. Um, honestly, it's, it's kind of... So I am not an expert in either UML based sorts of things or any of these other ones. Like I am also some of the stuff probably has to be modified after some additional thoughts, right? Based on the reference implementation, I'm down to have a, like, you know, a one or two hour working session just to kind of like go through a, an actual diagram. I can write up a, a few things. I'm just not great at diagramming. Anyone great with, with modeling? Refresh of that UML college course. No, not good either. I mean, not terrible, but I want to do better than that. John. Alex. So I do have a couple of folks on my side who I can probably. Whoop. Wait, where did my my? Ah. Uh, I have a few folks probably on my side who I can work with on on that. Um, okay. I think that Alex's wording here fills in that that cap. Give you a minute if you want to read it. begins being collected? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know how to word that. That can totally be changed. I was thinking like, you know, the difference between if we start caring about the provenance from the point at which a developer uh, commits to a pipe and, and a pipeline gets triggered, or if we're also looking at like, you know, was this commit signed? And so we're looking at sort of the developer identity before that, or like, you know, what, at what point in the chain do we actually start recording the data, if that makes sense. Um, and that's that's kind of what I was trying to say there, but if someone can word that better, please go for it. I'd say um, begins to be recorded, perhaps. Yeah, recorded might be a better word than collected. It's first yeah. recorded or begins to be recorded. I'd say maybe is first recorded. Does this run over? onto the other sentence, or should we split this paragraph off right here? So 
along the same line of thought, but a different idea. Yeah, go for it. Split it up. I might end up putting it back together. I'm going to add the text to you suggested. Sounds like you, you feel good about it. Okay, another pass. That's the diagram. Great qualification. The right S bombs or just the S bomb artifacts? Can they pull off the wrong ones? I think you could just remove the right ones, yeah, because I don't think yeah. most of the time they've got capacity to get any of them, either wrong or right ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right now I would say uh, outside of some POC work that um, a handful of us have done. Nobody's really done S bomb emission controller sort of stuff. Um, the thing that uh, has been done right now, and this is the, some of the stuff was released uh, last week um, while we were all at KubeCon, but like the ability to sort of validate attestations, the ability to validate um, signatures of of some of the images as part of you know, so that stuff like Connoisseur, Kyverno, Opa. Hmm. 
as a workaround, additional, like, do we want to call that out? Or, like, is it obvious? And just say, hey, this is not supported today. Yep. And so the only thing that maybe is, uh, you know, maybe just say, um, I don't know how we want to say, like, your own cust. you might need to write your own custom code as it stands today to do some of this. Okay, we'll, come, we'll come back to that one. What does this sentence mean? Admission controller discussed in this paper is applicable at different levels. Yeah, that's where I want some additional feedback. Uh, oh, I my I must have not clicked the comment there. Uh, I was going to add in a comment just saying, hey, look, I think this needs to be, um, we need to take a look at this a little bit more. Um, I think the idea, uh, so what he's trying to say, and I think it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, which is um, there's different elements of the admission controller, right? Or, or what the admission controller is doing, right? There's a production one, which we've said is out of scope. There is also, um, uh, there's also a couple other things like which are kind of highlighted, which is one is, I think that's where the pipeline emission controller, dependency emission controller, and build emission controller sort of come in. I'm not exactly sure what the, about the dependency. Oh, uh, no, now I remember. Um, maybe that's, hmm. so the, 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 the things that to, to get across here are, we want to make sure that like there should be an emission controller for something like Tecton such that somebody can't just push a random tecton task and have it go through our whole process, right? Because then that tecton task could do something bad. That'd be a problem. Uh, there should be a mission controller for the secure software factory itself, right? Like, are we ensuring that we're running approved, um, uh, approved tecton images, approved um, whatever else that, we have in there, right? And then the final one is in the build, we want to validate that whatever we're building, right? If, if let's say I, I'm using, you know, I have, I don't know, a Rust container, then that's going to be my build. That Rust container better be signed and have that valid attestations. And, you know, because somebody can just go based on my KubeCon talk, right? Is we could just go and swap it out. And, you know, that's a problem. Impersonation might, might not be the right word, but I'll break it down. Yep. So this may be the way of saying this. There's at least three kinds of inputs that we want the admission controller to be looking at. There's the the input that is the the mm -hmm. components of the pipeline itself. So the 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 tecton container, the the whatever that is actually running the jobs. Um, there's the the input that is the pipeline, the task definition. So does the job that is being run meet our specifications? And then there's the input of like the, that third container that you're talking about. But, but I'm wondering if like the way to phrase this is the emission controllers should be concerned about three types of inputs within the software factory. So I agree with that. I think the, the thing we can just sort of be very clear about, right? Because I think that there's going to be stuff regarding um, the quality and certain elements of an individual task that we want to sort of say, hey, yes, like you're, you're doing the right sorts of things. I think most of that we already have in other areas of the paper, which is like, make sure that you're doing code review of your tasks and so on and so forth. But I think there's an element here, which is just more of the, if somebody can bypass something, we want to make sure that only approved tasks are coming in. And you can have some additional rules, right, that, that are validating some of those things. But I think the key here is that 
you know, only approve tasks and we could just sort of leave it there. Cause you know, I think there's a lot more details, but that's, you know, we're not going to have the time to kind of get into all of that right now outside of just, um, you know, just saying it should be an approved task that, you know, only approved tasks are the ones that are allowed in. Um, and other where elsewhere in the document, we do have elements of what we're kind of considering the best practices. Does that make sense? What, what is the third input, Alex? Is it build or? It's, it's the same things that, uh, that Michael was listing above, I think. I, I, was, I think I was trying to figure out, because um, we were all tripping on the, the, the idea of it being layers or levels. And I was saying, I wonder if, if the way to cast it is as the inputs. I think so. It's what I'm trying to, to write down as you talk about it. Um, how, but how yeah, it's, you... the, it's the same ones that Michael was listing, I think. So the, the, the components of the pipeline itself, the input of the task definition. Uh, and then I think whatever his third one there, the, um, the, the what is being built, the, the Rust container in his example. I'll, I'll merge those those two together. So, and we have text here already. So we want to take out the first sentence, which we're replaced, replacing for this other one. Uh, Isn't, aren't these two almost the same level or the same input? The components and then it says, well, we configure the pipeline to perform checks that the components are trusted and verifiable. Yeah, I think those are at least somewhat overlapping. Okay. And then this one is talking about two and three and one. Verifying pipeline definitions and referenced images. Oh, no.
ish. Okay. Is is a secure software factory instance shaded? Does that mean the instance that it is deployed or the instant that it gets deployed or once something gets triggered to run through this secure software factory? Good question. Well, I think maybe it might make sense just to kind of say, um, well, you know, I, I, I guess uh, this is part of the like thing where, where we just want to kind of highlight um, defined by user, verify the pipeline. Oh, instantiate when, mm, oh, yeah, the way that reads is more of like when a pipeline is triggered. And we should just kind of not even necessarily say by user. A sequence, a sequence of a series of admission checks. Is it dependencies the right word? This sounds like, well, authorization for the user happens before it gets triggered. It has to happen before it actually gets triggered to be allowed to be triggered. And I feel like the next two, two and three there are basically elaborating on that third input above as I'm looking at them. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. How would you reward this? I think I would merge all of this into that third input somehow. Maybe I would drop the first part here because we're we're assuming that at this point, we're assuming that if you're triggered the pipeline, you're an authorized user at this point in our document. Um, and Um, and then I think maybe that, yeah, yeah exactly. Ahead. Yep. No, I think this is a good way to do it. Um, and then yes, nope, I think that works. Um, it is desirable. It is a is it compulsory? Is it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's going to be at this point very hard. Like, I don't think anybody's doing a, um, uh, we're not verifying open source package dependencies as part of the admission controllers. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, especially it depends on how many stages or how, how deep your tree is, right? Like if you've only got two dependencies, maybe that's easy. But if, you know, that can get really complicated. 
Fair. It is aspirational. Where are mechanisms for in the future? Like, what do we want to say? Well, I, is this something that we would be handled by the admission control per se? Um, I mean, I think there might be yeah. certain things. Like, uh, um, so yeah. as an example, a builder image, right? Like a parent image that I might be building off of, that's going to be easy to do admission control on. But if I say, hey, make sure I don't pull this bad JSON, uh, not JSON, um, a Java package, right? Maven package. Is I'm not sure how we would do that via a sort of normal cloud native admission controller. <laughs> yeah, I think in my head, the way that I imagine this working, you know, in in some future state where like this is possible, is that is that it's it's happening sort of like is that this is basically a recursive process, right? So what we've said about mm the final artifact that we're building, you then just apply that to a previous artifact that is, you know, dependency X. And then if dependency X also has an artifact or has a dependency, then eventually you, you, you recurse the same process to, you know, the previous artifact that is dependency Y that's going to be ingested by dependency X that's going to be ingested by our artifact. Um, so that's, that's like in my head, how I imagine this eventually working is that like, it's it's just kind of recursively goes deeper. Um, but uh, so I don't know that there's like a whole lot for us to say if that's sort of the, the dream other than to say, you know, whatever the thing is that you're building right now, these are the steps you do for it. And then if someday you have the capability to, you know, build a certain set of your dependencies before you build your final artifact, then you're doing the same process, but you're doing it for those. And then you just pass those in to the next stage, if that makes yeah. sense. It does. We could probably, I'm just leaving it out of, out of scope. So it doesn't get conflated and people, oh, I, I implemented this thing and my open source dependencies are not getting validated. What's up? So we can write what you just said of how you envision that working. Seems feasible. It's not it's not just quite there today. Fair? Yeah, I can I can drop in a couple lines to that effect if you want. I think this this yeah. next paragraph here is just continuing what is above that. It looks like to me. Uh, like we're running around in circles. <laughs> I can take a look at this at some point if you'd like. I think probably my guess is, I think we've circled around this particular question in several meetings now. And my guess is that this is just multiple iterations of right, trying to write the answer to this question and they could probably all get combined together somehow. Yeah. So I can take a look at how to, how to try to merge some of these things and trim it down. Yeah. 
I feel pretty good with what we just wrote here that this this is just zooming too much into implementation details like this captures at a high level all these things Agreed. do you guys disagree scratch it maybe the one bit of signatures as a note yeah, and just uh, just but just make it clear that the the actual production emission controller is out of scope outside of you should be doing those things. The above inputs are concerned with the supply chain. Well, I don't know. In addition to I'll, I'll defer to Alex. We'll leave it there for now. Let me just make a quick comment. Alex. I don't have your email, Alex, in my contact. So. Just tag yourself there. Actions and capabilities of the SSF. Hey, how, how are you two guys doing on time? I feel like we're starting to make headway. <laughs> yeah, I got a drop, I sorry. I was saying in chat, Alex, if you want to have some someone be with you when you're going through that tag, sometimes it's just nice to have, you know, like a rubber duck type person or just, you know, let me know. Anyway, gotta go. Bye-bye everyone. See ya. Yeah, and I'm, I'm this is, probably one of my still key priorities here uh, is to finish up whatever uh, needs to get finished up. Um, oh, yeah, if we can get you that, Taylor, one second. I've got to drop in just a second as well, but um, I will keep circling back at this. The, the only thing that I um, have really added to this is I tried to outline in the uh, the prototyping section farther down sort of the skeleton of what i think how i think that might go i think you went past it there um yeah so this is what michael put in and i put in, in there we had an earlier section that was like titled the prototype and i tried to put a skeleton in there that that may encompass some of this or maybe we you know i don't know just one idea for for formatting that so it's a little farther up there yeah, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time and effort trying to talk to the software factory in an abstract and high level way and trying to incorporate every, every consideration possible. I think we should actually open up the doc with the prototype implementation and then have the rest, the rest of the reference architecture support and describe that in more detail. So just inverting the order of what we have right now, plucking this off from the appendix, making it part into the body and, and as further up as we can possibly make it. I like that. Yeah. And then um, this is probably something off uh, line, but you and I, Andres, you, I'm not sure what the process is. If we wanted to go and take that that demo code I have and start to make it into something real, um, yeah. that's you know an actual CNCF project. Yeah. Because I, you know, at this point, I think you know, given that all code is open source, it's not owned by my company um, or anything like that. It, it is purely just, you know, and in fact, we're using lots of different things internally um, for, for various reasons. But uh, obviously we wanna, you know, from our perspective, the more folks who can start poking around with this sort of thing, it helps everybody out, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. cause if, 
if a lot of folks can start saying, yeah, you know, I can't use all of this, but I can use most of it. And I can poke around and got, now have my own secure software factory that, that helps everybody. Totally. Totally. Yeah. There's, there's a couple approaches there. Uh, let's chat about those. I think we should start off by anonymizing the code, just making sure it's, or well, it's a, it's a POC code. So we can, start off with that and from that build up. So to, to try to have a, a quick turnaround on like this that we're looking here, like do you guys want to reconvene some time later? Do you want to reconvene tomorrow? And do like what we've done on this later half of the call? Yeah, I'm down. Uh, let me just double check what my schedule looks like. I have some time tomorrow up until mm, I, I have some time tomorrow. Not, not surprisingly, not a ton. Um, actually, yeah. no, 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 there's a few hours I, I'm open. Uh, okay, cool. Let, let me know what works. I am on paternity leave, so I have all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's that going for you so far? That's going well. It's going very awesome. Well. Yeah. Cool. All right. Eat, sleep, Wait. repeat. So I have I have all this time to work on this. So uh, let me let me make a copy of the doc and start making that uh, restructure. And uh, yeah, hey Taylor, good to see you here. Hello. How goes it? It's all right. I'm trying to. Add more security tests, and I just saw the supply chain um, group going, so I decided to jump in. Right on. Welcome. Yeah, we're looking for reviewers at this point. So if we have time to read through this thing, make sure it's cohesive, that is going to be very beneficial. I've shared it with um, several people already. So hopefully they'll. Jump into. Cool. Well, cool. this has been good. Two hours and five minutes for you, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, gotta gotta secure all the supply chains. You know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, have some cool. What well, once this is done, uh, have some additional cool things to show off that are maybe up to and including salsa four. Um, coming up soon. So, so uh, as like uh, obviously not out of scope of the paper, but but something that maybe has next steps for the group that we can start poking with. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Good stuff. And I'll bring you uh, when I free up in a little bit. Okay. Cool. I'll be working cool. on this till then. Yeah. Okay. Later. Bye. Later. So much. See ya. All right.